Hey kids, welcome to Unit 4, Lesson 6, Static Methods, Exercise Number 3. Write a static method called getLetterGrade. The method takes a parameter in score for the score to check and returns a string with a matching letter grade. If score is greater than or equal to 90 and less than or equal to 100, we're going to return an A. If score is greater than or equal to 80 and less than 90, we're going to return a B. If the score is greater than or equal to 70 and less than 80, we're going to return a C. If the score is greater than or equal to 60 and less than 70, return a D. Then in my console Java, we're going to call the get letter method with different scores to test a method. Let's take a look at our code. We don't have much here in my console. Let's see grade checker. Don't have much in grade checker either. Well, let's start breaking down this problem. First, we need to create a static method called get letter grade. And it's going to take one parameter and score. So let's write that method signature. It's going to be public static. And we're going to return a string with the matching letter grade. So it's going to be a string. And the method is going to be called get letter grade. Don't forget your parentheses. Inside grade, we're going to pass one parameter that is int score. Now, kids, we're going to reinforce some skills from lesson number four. We're going to do some compound operators. And this time, instead of doing a bunch of if statements, I'm going to do if else if statements. Let's start off with number one. And that's going to be if do our parentheses and our curly Q's. This is going to be 100 to 90. And if the score is greater than or equal to 90 and the score is less than or equal to 100, we need an equal sign there, then we're going to return an A. Well, that needs to be in quotes though. Don't forget your semicolon. That's our first one. Now we're going to do an else if statement. So we're going to say else if, don't forget your parentheses and curly braces. This is going to be else if and 90 to 80. And in here, we're just going to say if score is greater than or equal to 80 and score is less than 90, this time we're going to return a B. Don't forget your semicolon. Give ourselves some room here. Now we have another else if to go. Else if, parentheses, semicolons, inside here, score has to be greater than or equal to 70, and score has to be less than 80. And if that happens, we are going to return a C. Let's clean this up just a little. Let's comment this out. We need another else if, and this is going to be 80 to 70. And in this one, else if curly braces, 
And this one is going to be score greater than or equal to 60 and score less than 70. We're going to return D with a semicolon. And we have one more else statement to do. And we're gonna say else, and we're gonna return try again. And this is the end of our statement, end of our class. So end of class, Let's bring this up here. This is end of method and everything else looks pretty good. Make sure scores spelled right, looks pretty good. Time will tell kids. Let's head over to my console and test our method out. And we're gonna call the get letter grade from the grade checker class and see if a grade is valid. Let's just do a test one, system dot out dot print ln and we'll say grade for a we should concatenate and we're going to call from the grade checker class and we're going to call the get letter grade method and we want to check for a hundred to see if it prints off an a so it should say grade for A, and we should get an A. Well, let's see if we're right, kids. Oh, looks like we got an error. Looks like we forgot a semicolon after try again. Let's go back, clear our console, and hit run. Grade for an A is an A. That looks pretty good. I know this is spelled right, so let's copy it. Let's do a B, and this time we can put in an 88. Let's hit run. We got a B. Let's try C. And we'll put in this time a 75. Hit run. We got A, B, C. Let's try our D students. This would be a 65. Hit run. We get a D. Let's try for anything else. We'll put our F here. And let's just put one as a number. We should get try again. Let's hit run. We get try again. I don't know if that's the best thing to put there. What happens if the grade is 111? We're gonna get try again as well. Let's just leave this one blank. That means if the grade is out of the range, we won't get anything. And that'll be a visual cue to whoever's using our program. Hey, something's probably not right. Let's go back to my console. Let's hit run. Blank there. Let's try a 25%. Hit run. And nothing. So it looks like our program's working pretty good. Key takeaway from this lesson is again, exploring the static method. And remember, a non-static method is an instance method that belongs to each object that is generated from the class. If our method depends on individual characteristics of an object, then the method should be non-static. And what this really means is for a static method, we can run this without creating an instance. Non-static methods, we need a instance to run the method.
Hopefully this video helped you understand static methods a little better. As always, kids, if you have a question, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. See you later, kids. Bye, bye, bye.